second uh, question in the Catechism. Uh, the second question in the Catechism, uh, which is, what rule has God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? And the answer, the word of God which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments is the only rule to direct us how we may glorify God and enjoy him. It is one thing to speak of glorifying God. It is a different thing to know how to do it. And that's what the second question is all about. We uh, know according to God's word we are to glorify him and we are to enjoy him. But how do we do that? What does it mean to glorify God? What does it mean to enjoy him? Well, the word of God is the only rule to direct us uh, what those things actually mean. Uh, uh, so many people have wrong ideas of what it is to glorify God and what it is to enjoy God. Uh, but the word of God directs us properly and according to God's mind how we may glorify and enjoy him. In Ephesians 2 verse 20, uh, we read there in our catechism books and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, which gives us the reason why the word of God is the only rule, because it is built on the Lord Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And it goes on to say, doesn't it, that the man of God may be perfect, truly equipped or um, furnished unto all uh, good works. And then it says in 1 John 1, 3, and this is a very, and I really wanted to get to this verse and make this point uh, clearly. In 1 John 1, 3, it says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We often talk about fellowship. Um, and we've said it before many times in this place that fellowship is not simply getting together for a cup of tea and you know having a, a chat and so on it is much more than that fellowship is a very serious thing it's a, a real union with the Lord Jesus Christ and with his people but notice here in this verse how we have fellowship what is the means of fellowship and as the Apostle John says, it is in the communication of the word of God. It is the apostles declaring what they saw, what they heard, so that we might have that fellowship. The point is this, that we cannot have true Christian fellowship outside of the revealed word of God. That is the context and that is the foundation of all true Christian fellowship. So therefore, when we talk about these things, we must understand what it means to glorify God, to enjoy Him, but also what it means to use the Word of God in the context of these things, and especially in the context of our fellowship with God. We know nothing about God outside of His Word. Anything outside of the Bible is, frankly, guesswork. And lots of people say, don't they? Well, I think God is like this. I think God is like that. And they're just, to use Calvin's words, exercising the thoughts of their own brains. But if we're to have true fellowship with God and with his people, that can only happen in the atmosphere and context and grounded upon the reality of what God says in his word about himself about his church, and about the world, and about all that we do in the glory of God. So, what rule has God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? The word of God which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments is the only rule to direct us how we may glorify God 
and enjoy him.